I'm uh, out here on the eastern edge of Kansas City on I-70 at this uh, mega, I call it an antique store, resale store, flea market, something like that, called Brass Armadillo. Uh, they've got a lot of like really cool little bins and like um, glass cabinets with stuff. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to do uh, a uh, field trip Friday, something we haven't done in a while. So uh, I'll take you in and show you what they've got. And maybe if I find something cool, I'll purchase it and we can talk about that. Let's go. All right, so here we go. Um, there's a lot of Pokemon and magic gathering here too, because uh, those things kind of interest me and, and well, at least Bridget. So this is one of the many vendors that just had a ton of Pokemon stuff unopened. Um, yeah, plenty that had open stuff as well, but uh, I didn't get a, I don't buy a whole lot of these packs because I don't really know what has value yet. Uh, I know that about magic. Um, this one had some board game stuff uh, peppered in as well. Uh, D and D and dice and I see Dixit back there. All things nerdy, uh, magic stuff. I know Steve Rademacher still got a sizable magic uh, collection that's unopened. Uh, I played magic for a long time, but most of my stuff is cracked open because we like to play that stuff. Uh, so this guy had just a ton of like loose cards. Um, condition kind of varied, but you can see that you know there's some some older stuff in there, some you know '60s and whatnot peppered in. Uh, I did flip through this. Um, there wasn't a whole lot that really like stood out to me that I had to buy. Uh, comics, like I like comics as well. Uh, these are, I think, those are Vanguard. Uh, it's hard to see from the view I got here, but um, you know, one of the other uh, games out there, kind of um, the Weiss Schwab thing that we've been collecting. And of course, uh, here's some more Magic the Gathering, some more Pokemon. Don't worry, guys. There are sports cards in here. Just give it a minute. Um, in fact. There were so many cases <laughs> that I stopped recording. I mean, th this goes on. You can see the length of the video. Um, I, and I, you know, scanned rather quickly a lot of these things because I was trying to get through all of it. You know, zoomed in where I felt appropriate. There's some DC stuff. That's cool. Uh, here's some sports stuff. Um, but my point is, is, at the end, I just kind of just walked down the aisles and just started looking at them because, uh, well, my phone was, battery was running out. There's Mark McGuire. It's cool. Um... And, uh, you know, I mean, after a while, you, you sort of get the point. There's just a ton of stuff here. But uh, these are some nice vintage cards here. Uh, so, I, you know, I should have planned better. I, I didn't bring a lot of money with me. And I, I'm trying to, you know, set aside a budget for how much I should spend. And you know, I've spent a lot of stuff on eBay. So I didn't buy a ton of stuff while I was here. But there were a lot of things that caught my eye. There's a Bo Jackson there. Um, and there were several binders. I didn't have time to go through all the binders. This guy had uh, 150,000 cards. That, that was a lot. Although I bet some of you can probably match that. So a lot of Hall of Famers you can see listed up here. Um, you know, the one that interests me are like, you know, the Bo Jackson and the George Brett and things like that. But yeah, I mean, all these are notable stars. All of them are worth attention. The thing is, because it's behind glass case, um, you have to like hit this little like button. And they come over and they look at the size of the Ken Griffey Jr. one. <laughs> That's a lot of G uh, Griffey's. Um, anyway, so they have to come over and they have to stand there and kind of watch you and make sure, you know, you don't pocket anything. So they were pretty busy considering it was a, just a Friday morning into afternoon, really. I was here for several hours and I feel kind of bad about eating up all their time. A lot of, uh, wax pack stuff in here. There were several of them that had wax packs. Um, I think I did up picking up one wax pack uh, that I didn't have, but, uh, you know, again, I, I this video is going to kind of help me and then I'm going to go back and look at it and decide if there's anything like oh crap i should have got that um things that really stood out to me i went ahead and, and picked up while i was there but you see this two hundred fifty thousand dollars for legendary birds i do not know enough about pokemon to know if that's a good price or not i mean there's original ones but that seems overpriced actually the lady <laughs> with those pokemon showed up while i was there and like tried to sell them to me i was like oh, i don't know that's more my daughter thing uh, this guy had a, a nice display where they were all front facing and he actually was smart enough to put the prices on them. Most of them had the prices kind of hidden, which sort of scares me. Sorry for the glare guys. It's behind glass. There's a lot of light. Um, you know, I mean, if, if you gotta like tie somebody up just to like look at them and there's a lot to flip through, um, you know, I, I kind of like, wouldn't like to know the price. So I know whether it's worth my time or not. Uh, this guy had a pretty, pretty large display. They're all kind of like hanging on those little, little hooks there. Um, basketball, NASCAR. I think he had some golf in there too. Uh, you know, there's some, some vintage in there. I see Project 2020 in the back. 
Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm getting better at knowing which cards have value. I like these oversized ones here, but they didn't, he didn't have any Royals. Maybe that's that was in that gap there. Uh, there's George Brett there, but I have that one already. So, um, you know, uh, I'm sure if I brought Steve back here, for example, uh, he'd probably see some some Packer and uh, Brewer stuff that he'd like, or, you know, even other teams. Um, so, you know, see, there's just cards for days and days. I mean, you could easily spend a weekend in here going through everything. Uh, there's another one of the many Pokemon ones. I think, so, you know, a few of these were the same vendor because I saw a lot of uh, a lot of the same stuff. I don't know. There's Mr. Beast bars over there. Bridget's really into that. Mr. Beast from, uh, well, the Mr. Beast channel. I don't know. I honestly get it. It's just a chocolate bar, but um, supposedly some kind of prize in there. Uh, you see that rainbow one kind of in the center there? Uh, those are really rare, I'm told. Highly sought after, but uh, I don't know who the heck that character is. I'm more of a Pokemon Go person, so shiny or not. There's not a whole bunch of layers here. Um, yeah, there's just... Uh, okay, this guy, I think, had is the one that had a bunch of autographs at the bottom. And there's some there. So, you know, parallels and, uh, you know, these are mostly modern cards. And I was kind of surprised, since it is listed as an antique mall, how much new modern stuff was in here. So it's really, that's why I said it's more of like a resale shop, if anything. There's some Bobby Witt there. Okay, that's the Bobby Witt right there. Uh, which, you know, now that I'm looking at it, I do see it says the pound sign in 25. So I guess, uh, but there, it wasn't numbered. Maybe it's because of the red ink. I don't know. I'm rambling. I would have liked to have that Bobby Witt. Uh, I don't have an autograph of his yet. Um, and if he turns out to be as awesome as we think he might be, that would be great to have. Uh, I did flip through these. There wasn't anything that really stretched out to me. I looked at that Bo Jackson there in case it was a Tiffany's. It was not. And I'm not paying that much for the standard Tops one. Pops. A lot of people in my family like the Pops stuff. This guy had um, some 8x10 autographs. That's pretty funny. I think that's Travis Kelsey taking a beer shot off of the uh, the trophy there. Uh, there's a flip. Um, yeah. A lot of good stuff here, especially if you're a Chiefs fan. Uh, Sylvester Stallone, it's kind of random. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I had Tyreek Hill. and Oh, this is funny, from A Christmas Story. <laughs> uh, triple Dog Dare You. I love that. Um, yeah, there's some Merrifield, some Salvador Perez. A lot of cool stuff. I do have some 8x10s, but you know, I more prefer the cards. And really, it's just because it's hard to manage. It's Freddy Krueger. Some, like, random, car random autos in here, mostly sports, mostly local. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, some of them are like a blended thing. Okay, this one appears to be open, so I could actually flip through them. And, uh, most of them, the glass covered it, and you could not get even remotely close to, uh, the cards. But the ones that were open, they tend to be, you know, junk wax here. Okay, so this is the box where I got that, uh, the summer stuff, uh, summer Olympics. I did flip through this, you know, looking at both sides for a while there, but it is... Yeah, it is the cheapest junk wax stuff. I mean, even though it was, you know, a lot of it was Royals cards, and it's 25 cents for each of those bundles. Uh, it's the same here. The, it's possible that there's something buried in one of those things that they aren't aware that has a lot of value, but, uh, you know, you're kind of taking a risk, and uh, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. So, uh, you know, as my collection kind of grows, and you might be able to relate to this, you know, it's the bulk, you know, just the sheer mass of stuff gets to the point where, like, I need to be a little bit more choosy. The, anything that sort of qualifies as junk wax, uh, I'm going to probably pass on. Um, yeah, so this guy had a bunch of junk wax packs, like I was just talking about. So I did flip through them, and I looked to see... Um, there's some, some loose cards in there, too, which is sort of random. I think there were seven different types of uh, packs here. None of them are really the, the junk wax era cards that you expect to have, like, good Hall of Famers. Um, and I'm not real good at remembering those things, so I actually Googled, you know, which junk wax packs have the most value, and I found a list of some guy ranked the top 20. None of those 20 were in here. It was either the wrong year or the wrong brand or whatever. So, uh, and then just all the cards thrown in a bin like this, I mean, they easily would get damaged. So, uh, I don't know. Like, like there's, you see some Magic the Gathering Land for 25 cents. That's not even worth a penny, man. You can get that for free at, you know, any card store that's worth its salt. So, uh, I guess maybe sell on to grandparents and stuff that don't know what, what the heck their grandkids want. I don't know. Uh, so, I see some NASCAR there. It says hat pins, but that is not what those are. This random box. 
Um, you know, it's interesting to me, like, a lot of these people would took great care and time to put in the, you know, scan it so that when somebody bought something up front, it would have the right price and whatnot. Um, and for, like, these junk wax things, I don't know if they're actually selling these or not. I think I, this guy is where I end up picking up a couple of cheap relics. Uh, it's an archives. I thought it was a 50s card first, but it looked too good. Um, yeah, so, I mean, if you like to go through bins, this is the place for you. Um, the good bins, of course, are, you know, behind the glass here. This guy had a lot of unopened product, I think was all kind of high priced, in my opinion. Maybe I'm spoiled because I cruise the Walmarts and the Targets and eBay and whatnot, but, uh, I don't want to pay above MSRP for something, especially if it's something relatively new that I could go out and get myself. You know, some old stuff, I sort of get it, especially depending on what you might pull out of there. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of good royals in here. I could go broke in a store like this very easily. I don't know what the whole place is insured for. Um, see some Packers in there, Steve. You should come back out here with me sometime if you got this far into the video. Yeah, so I don't do the voiceover thing a whole lot, so I uh, I forgive or forgive me if I'm just rambling for the sake of hearing my voice. Okay, so I remember this section. I think it was like three glass cases all in a row, and it had to be the same guy because they were all kind of laid out the same way. Some nice bat relics and some patches. You know, I I, I collected cards as a kid. And it wasn't uh, until, let's say, late 2020, maybe early 2021, where I started getting back into it, which I totally blame Steve Rademacher from watching his videos. But um, I, there are a lot of avid collectors out there. I've learned that just joining the current community and just, you know, going to places like this. And um, it sort of makes me wonder, do they, like, open all these things and then, you know, realize that they've overextended themselves and they're selling off their cards to buy more cards? Or did their wife have a come to Jesus moment with them. I, uh, I think I've sort of found the, the fine line with my wife of not buying too much to incur her wrath, although she is pretty flexible. Uh, it's a lot of NBA stuff here. I, I'm not well versed in the NBA. I only know the vintage King stuff, but, uh, you know, obviously the big names, Michael Jordan's, your Shaq's, your, um, uh, Patrick Ewing's, Larry Bird's, those kinds of stuff. See, like that pack right there, that Rookies and Stars, I just opened that recently for our May giveaway. I think they were charging triple what I paid for it. And that's, you know, a 2021 product. Let's see, lots more boxes here. That's sort of like my wall at home. I've got a wall of unopened blaster boxes. Yeah, there it goes. You can kind of see them together. Okay, maybe this was just two. I was thinking it was three. Um, yep. Oh, this is the guy that maybe had three because they were all on wooden stands. I wanted to kind of zoom in and go through all of them, but that A, would have taken up a lot of time, and B, when I was here, I was kind of like uh, surrounded by a lot of other people, and I didn't want to be the rude guy that's like hogging the whole aisle just because he wants to record something. I did get a couple of eyes for people like, why are you recording all this stuff? Well, you know, I wanted to share with people. Hopefully you guys like this. Uh, please let me know in the comments. Is this something that interests you? Or you're like, man, I want to go look at it myself. I can't read it. Maybe zoom in more. You know, feedback. Let, let, let me know. Um, my guess is that, you know, some people are going to watch the whole thing. Maybe it's like a background or whatnot. And other people are just kind of like jump ahead. So uh, that's fine. Uh, you know, whatever. There's some good vintage royals there. Whatever uh, whatever floats your boat. I, uh, I enjoyed going through this place. Like I said, I think it's about like three hours here. I did I think I went through these cards uh, once I did finally get somebody to unlock it for me. Uh, the morning shift lady, she was all by herself. I thought those were football wad cards. I was all excited. I would turn out they were collegiate basketball. Uh, there didn't turn out to be any good commons in there, at least any that were in good enough shape. And I was hoping some of those tall boys would be Kansas City, but they were not. Bobbleheads, bobbleheads. I only have the Buck O'Neill bobblehead. I'd kind of like to get the Satchel Page one. Oh, yeah, these are replica championship rings which uh i don't know it's kind of a neat idea that's I, I would never wear something like that i don't know if i would even really want to bother showing it off but the idea is kind of cool 
it was all in so interesting seeing, you know, how many dang Yankees there were there and how few some other teams were represented. So here you can kind of get a better idea of how big this store is. It's just massive. Um, so the glass cases take up not even a quarter of it. It's like an eighth of it. The rows just go on and on and on and on. Uh, so, oh yeah, these are some cool Atari uh, Atari games, and I think it's NES in here too. Some non-sports cards I flipped through. There's some Last Action Hero stuff. Uh, some aliens, I can't quite tell. Um, that's the mask with Jim Carrey. Uh, remember, there's some Hook stuff with Robin Williams. Ninja Turtles. The problem is, is you know, none of them said complete set, and maybe they were. I don't know, but you know, just for like haphazard cards, um, you know, I would Google them and see how much they were they were selling for on eBay and whatnot. Maverick. I know he's got a lot of Maverick cards there. Um, I just I, I, you know, a lot of these are comic cards as well. I finally got the uh, Marvel uh, Series Three set, which as a kid I had collected, so I was really excited to to pick those up at a local store too i think it was like 35 bucks for for all of them i'll have to show those in a video uh there's some atari stuff and this guy had a whole bunch of other toys um i don't collect toys per se you know uh you've seen my video with uh my star wars stuff in my office so anytime i come across a collection like this i look for something you know oddball or maybe like a character like the joker my oldest son loves the joker from batman so uh you know if i find something he doesn't have from that oh, this is the time lapse that i did just to show you how much time it takes walking through it all um this one i thought was really cool because it had all this glass lit up it really catches your eye as you go mm. by Ooh, day's cool stuff i think i should go check that out <laughs> i need a sign like that uh this one was cool they had all these like um bands and uh, artists and stuff but they also had sports ones so you know talked about their championships some famous players in each each row had like different versions you know there'd be like 10 different chiefs and ones 10 different royals and i almost got that kansas jayhawk one because it had osayo baji on it oh boy is a scorcher today um uh, okay so i didn't get a lot i um some things were overpriced some things i wanted to do research on and i might come back for but what i did get was this uh box here of 1996 olympic cards that has the all-important michael jordan and mia ham uh so these cards both have value there might be some others in here because there's a lot of olympiads but it's a complete set um and i checked it <laughs> because the box was open um something that might surprise you uh honestly it surprises me is uh these mr beast bars um uh, mr beast if well if you're on youtube it's unavoidable you've heard of mr beast uh one of the largest youtube channels out there uh there's actually two different ones here my daughter has made mention of these bridget fuller uh i don't get it it's, he's a youtuber why he has a chocolate bar i don't know but she has mentioned an interest in them and i've never seen them before and they had a whole bunch in there so i got one of these flavors because i'm trying to do a good uh, I also got these Chilling Rain Pokemon cards, which are, um, there are 10 packs, but there's only three cards in each pack, so they are all uh, some kind of promo thing, so uh, we'll probably open those at some point, well, some of them anyway, and the last things that I got, oh, I guess there's, this not the last things, but, uh, so my wife is Romanian, I may have mentioned that before, and there was a dealer that had some cool old Romanian coins. This is a 1930 Le or Bonnie. And this is a 1906. And I think that's kind of cool with the hole in it. Uh, that was, what, two bucks? So that's pretty cool. And then, what else did I get? Oh, yeah, a couple of, like, super cheap cards. This is an autograph of a Common, but it was 75 cents. And it's the team that I PC. Uh, here's a patch card. Again, Kind of a common card but these things uh were all marked down and a bat relic so all 50 to 75 cents figure why not and uh i did not have this for my pack collection i know it's junk wax era but this is one of the junk wax packs i didn't have so i grabbed that too uh, a lot of other things that i almost actually had in my hands a bobby witt jr autograph that i was going to pick up because on the front of it it said 25 dollars i was like yeah I'm, I'm buying that hell yeah and then we got out of the case, and there were two prices. And the price on the back was $150. I'm like, well, that's a big difference. So I asked her, I'm like, 
it says $25, can I pay $25? And she's like, well, you know, we, I'll have to call them because there's a discrepancy. And I knew what that meant. But uh, yes, yeah, so the guy, he would have gone down to 125, but I looked for comps online and I think it's closer to $100. Uh, so $25 I knew was a steal, but I was willing to go that route. Uh, I'm, I don't know. I didn't end up getting it. So long story short, uh, this has been a field trip of ours, um, something we used to do in the past and I would like to get back to. So uh, I'd originally planned on going to the Negro League Baseball Museum and wore my Buck O'Neill shirt. But when I arrived, it was flooded with kids on a field trip, which is great. I'm glad that they're going, but I decided that I better reschedule that one because uh, it would make it difficult for me to record um, effectively. So uh, that's it, done rambling. Thanks guys, uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, hope you're not getting too hot. It's stupid hot here. Um, but yeah, that's it. Peace out, everyone. Be good to each other.